But I was very interested, while we're waiting for that to happen, on the legalities of all of this, because many of my listeners yesterday were left open-mouthed by the response from Decorum Borough Council. Because, let's be honest, all of us at some point have had what is known as a wild wee. I don't think there is probably a person listening to this programme um, who has not at some point had to have a wee behind a tree or behind a bush or pulling over at the side of the road because they just are absolutely bursting to go. And the thought of this being an illegal act that you could be fined for, I know, is something that many people found surprising. Well, Nick Freeman is the lawyer known as Mr Loophole. And he joins us on the other line now. Good morning to you, Nick. Good morning, Jonathan. Decor and Borough Council are saying then that this was an illegal act and therefore Michael will have to pay this fine. They may let him off because of exceptional circumstances if they're prepared to take his medical condition into account. But ultimately what he did was illegal and therefore they're perfectly within their rights to fine him. Is that correct? Uh, not, not in my view. Um, the, the six penalty notice, I've had a look at it, um, it's under a particular section, Section 87 of this particular legislation, the Environmental Protection Act 1998. Um, and as you've correctly said what that means. And we could argue, you know, the, the, the specific words about whether or not urinating actually causes defacement. But what we need to do, when Parliament passes legislation, we need to consider what did Parliament intend to achieve? What was the spirit of that legislation? Um, and th th this act is quite helpful because if you look at section 98, it actually goes on to give some definition of what litter is. And, you know, I think most people have a very good grasp of what litter is. And it has its normal everyday meaning that you find in the Oxford Dictionary, etc., etc. But it says in this act um, that it includes discarded ends of cigarettes, cigars and light products and discarded chewing gum and discarded remains of other products. So in other words, it, it, it's taken the argument of what most people would regard as litter a little bit wider and say, because lots of people throw the cigarette ends out and spit out chewing gum and stuff like that. So it's including that. And, and I would argue as a lawyer that, um, it, that the very fact it doesn't mention urine, it, it clearly indicates that urine is not actually a, a, a piece of litter. It's not in any way any form of littering. Um, so I would say that their interpretation of what litter is, is contrary to the legislation uh, and it's contrary to its, its everyday meaning. Uh, and therefore, in my view, legally they are wrong. Um, the, the second point, of course, is Michael has a defence um, and the defence is it was a medical emergency um, and he under no circumstances should accept the fixed penalty. Be pragmatic under these circumstances they're clearly going to review it in Michael's favour. It's unfortunate he's had to pay £30. I think that the lesson for your listeners, I mean, there are various issues here. First of all, if you're going to, if, as you say, I think most people ha have wild wheeze and, you know, this happens regularly and it's not the exclusive preserve of male drivers. You know, one, one does wonder for, from a different legal uh, perspective, would the officer have, have stood there and watched while a lady weed? or somebody of a different gender, because that raises a, a whole host of different things. But we, we won't go into that too much. Um, weeing by itself can be an offence under the Public Order Act, if, if it's regarded as threatening abuse or insulting words of behaviour, whereby somebody feels insulted by it. And that, of course, is to deal with rowdy people who are in town centres on a Saturday night or whatever, and they get drunk uh, and they cause offence by their behaviour. Um, and, and that is the specific purpose of that particular section of that legislation. We don't need to concern ourselves with that. Here we're talking about somebody who's been very discreet, dealing with nature as it comes his way. Obviously, you know, if there are other people in the lay-by, you need to be very careful. Um, you, you need to be as discreet as you can, uh, so far as the emergency allows. But one point I would say is, if this, this happens again to any of your listeners, and they give an account, look, this is an emergency, I couldn't wait. They need to ask the officer to record the conversation, and they then want to read it and sign it to confirm its veracity. Because quite clearly here, Michael has been, you know, ha had a full account of the conversation or an accurate account being made, the council may well have taken a different approach, and Michael would have been £30 richer. So it's very important that an accurate record is kept. Uh, and certainly in so far as the law is concerned, you're entitled to ask the officer Please record this. He, he's legally obligated to record the conversation 
and offer it you to read it and sign it to confirm its accuracy. And that, that's what you should do. And had that happened here, then we might not be having this conversation. I don't know. But, but in my view, this is not littering. Um, it, 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 the, the Act clearly indicates it's not littering. And I think if they were to argue this in a court of law on this particular section, they would lose. That's very interesting. So ultimately, would your and, and we are told by some of our listeners that this particular lay-by on the A41 in Hertfordshire, it's um, it's a, a part of the dual carriageway just before motorists who are pulling onto the M25 would pull on. So I presume it may well be the last spot that motorists would think, I can pull over there and have a quick wee before I get on the M25, which, let's be honest, for 90% of the day is like a car park anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, and the, and, and the problem is you get caught there. <laughs> ex- exactly. And the, and the problem is, um, you know, if, if it's a traffic jam and if you're in stationary traffic and you, you're so bursting you have to get out, it's going to be much that, more... That's, committing, that's arguably committing an offence. And I should also say that, you know, many, many people carry bottles... There are bottles designed specifically for this purpose, but, you know, that can end up being um, affecting your driving adversely and you could have dri- driving, you know, you could be charged with driving without due care and attention or dangerous driving, depending upon ha- how your driving is affected by trying to wee when you're driving. It's not to be recommended. It's much safer if there's an emergency to get out. But, but, but Jonathan, if, if, you know, the lay-by is a mile or half a mile from a, um, a, a service area, then obviously... I, I, there's still a lot litter, but you know the, the drivers need to drivers need to plan very carefully. And uh, you know, many drivers spend many many miles on the road, about fifty thousand a year. And, and I try and I try and go when I don't need to, just just to avoid this sort of thing happening. But it, it isn't litter. And if the, the point was argued in court, in my in my view, they would lose. Right. Now, uh, I was going to ask you because apparently the enforcement officers sit in this layby mm-hmm. frequently. Mm. Because I have had uh, other calls from other listeners who have seen them and have had encounters with them, have had exactly the same encounter as Michael. So if somebody finds themselves in a position where all of a sudden somebody's banging on your window and saying, wind your window down, I'm giving you an enforcement uh, note, what's the best thing to do? Do you refuse to give your details or or what? What, How would you advise my listeners to respond? I would advise your listeners to to rise above it. There are legal obligations in terms of providing details. Um, The situation um, will will get much worse and and you lose your credibility. So I would always advise them to wind the window down. I mean, first of all, if if, you you know, we've we've highlighted this lay by now. So if if you're going to go there, if you need to use it, I'd keep your eyes open. And, and if it's an emergency, you, you need to see to the guy, excuse me, I can see you in the bushes. I'm going for a wee. This is an emergency. And then I'll talk to you. Um, <laughs> and, and please don't watch because yes. there is something slightly spooky about that as well. Um, but um, I know. So please don't drive off. Um, they've got your number plate. You're going to end up in a more serious problem and you end up losing your credibility for the reason you stopped in the first place. Right. But okay. on any of you, it, it's not litter. And that, what about, do, do, does, do, would your advice change, for example, because I know some of my other listeners have been querying, and this is certainly something that I've encountered myself, and I know, Nick, you're, you're a dog owner, there are times when you might be walking your dog in the middle of the countryside, yep. Yep. and suddenly you think, oh my word, that pint I had at the pub has gone right through me, I need to find somewhere and have a, have a wee. You go behind a tree or a bush in the middle of nowhere, yeah. um, again, should you find yourself unfortunate enough to suddenly find you're confronted by an enforcement officer yeah. um, fining you for urinating uh, behind a tree in the middle of the countryside. Do, do you give them your details? Or if you're Absolutely. not in a vehicle, do you just ignore them? Look, I, I, w- I would give the details um, because I don't want to end up having a scuffle with somebody. It, it just isn't worth it. I'd ask for his details as well. I'd possibly take a photograph of him to make sure I know who he is so that he's not an imposter. Um, I'd give him I'd give him minimum details, but I'd give him enough details so that he can contact me. Um, and as far as the law is concerned, you know, there are bylaws. Um, certain councils do have bylaws to prevent you um, urinating in a public place. But, but you, we have to look at this in the, in the overall realm of sensibility and, mm. and what this is designed to achieve. And it is ridiculous to suggest, you know, you see, you see sometimes mothers pull in with young children and they're desperate for a wee. 
um, and you see them holding the baby out, you know, u- urinating um, out, out of the side of the car. I mean, are we going to criminalize? This, this is a criminal offense we're talking about here. This, this is criminal. Um, so it's making a mockery of the law. It's not what Parliament intended. Um, obviously, you know, if you have a dog, you need to clear up after your dog in, in terms of the number two is not... <laughs> No, not the wing. But, um, but, you, but again, that, that's a very interesting point, isn't it? If I was travelling with my dog in the car on yep. the A41 yep. and there'd been some traffic for whatever reason yep. and my dog's yep. been cooped up in the boot of the car for a couple of hours, yep. I might see that lay-by yep. and think, I'm going to pull over and I'm going to let my dog have a, have a wee because she's probably bursting. Now, yep. surely the, the urine from a dog yep. is just as much litter as yep. the urine from, in this case, Michael. Well, neither of them are litter, but I take your point. But the difference is, as far as the, st- the statute's concerned, Section 87 deals with a person. It doesn't criminalise a dog for weighing. Um, so, so that, but, but the spirit of the legislation is to, to prevent littering. Um, you, I think you and I will probably agree, it, it's, we, urination is not littering. Um, but this statute refers to a person and not a dog. I see. So, well, so, so you're, you're, the dog is exculpated on the basis it doesn't fall within the confines of, the, of this particular statute. Well, I'm, I'm sure Poppy will be relieved, as indeed <laughs> will I be, <laughs> as, her, the pun. <laughs> as her legal guardian. Um, however, um, I think this is going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out. I mean, as you quite rightly say, I would be amazed and horrified if Decorum Borough Council, when they are presented with the the letter from the doctor saying that Michael has a, as he describes it, a weak prostate yeah. and therefore suddenly has these, uh, you know, significant urges to go to the loo. I would be amazed if they still said, well, we're going to see you in court. Well, but if, I, I'd, love, I'd love to be involved in the case if they want to take that view. Right. Well, there I you would, go, Michael. I would, love, I would love to be involved in the case. Michael. If they take that view. I'm, I'm sure they won't. Um, well, because there would be huge implications for the taxpayer um, it will be the most ridiculous situation. I mean, I, I do remember before, Jonathan, you and I have had a discussion about a lady who took a dog through a cemetery, if you remember. Lynette, Lynette, you, I remember it well. It. That's it, that's it. I think it was a day war broke out and we discussed that rather yes. than discussing the outbreak of war, which all the other news media channels were dealing with. But I'm, I'm sure that, you know, um, that this particular case, Bedford Council, isn't it, or decorum, um, uh, when they consider w- what the law is and get some legal advice and possibly hear what I'm saying, will think in any event, from a PR perspective, forgetting the law, this guy has a prostate problem. It, it was notified. They need to be speaking to their employers or their contractors and say, you must record things and use your discretion. We don't want to be trying to criminalize everybody for doing something that nature dictates or demands that we, we need to do. It, it's a ridiculous situation. They win absolutely no plaudits for it at all. Nick, as always, thank you so much for your time. Nick Freeman is the lawyer known as Mr Loophole. There we go, Michael. Worst case scenario then, Nick will be your lawyer if they if they take you to court. Well, what I'm going to do, Jonathan, because I haven't received the letter yet, is I'm straight down the surgery and say, and asking them if they've uh, written the letter. If they haven't, I'll ask them to cancel it. My well, no, 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 hang, no, but hang on a minute. I think Nick, Nick was saying that the letter. Hang on, Nick's still there. Nick, no, no, I pres- no, no, I'm not. I'm not that. That Michael. Um, let's not get caught up here. <laughs> um, uh, my, my advice to you, uh, right at the start, is you obtain the letter and you serve it on the council. Um, right. Yeah, okay. That, that's what okay. you need to do. Okay. That that's the that's the pragmatic approach. Yeah. Okay. If, if when they receive the letter, they say no, we're still pursuing it, then I'm happy to get involved. Right. OK, understood. Thank you, Nick, very much. Uh, Michael, let's see what happens. Let me know as soon as you got that letter from the doctor's surgery. Will do. Thank you for your help. All the best. And my grateful thanks again to Nick Freeman, the lawyer known to all of us as Mr Loophole. 